Welcome everybody. We are so happy that you are here and that you are watching our video and together we want to talk about Saturn in Pisces. And yeah, to start, um, we just do a little introduction. So I'm Verena Borel, an evolutionary astrologer, and I'm currently living in Austria. And yeah, you want to take over? <laughs> Jamie. I'm Jamie Goldstein and I'm an intuitive astrologer and I'm living in Oregon in the U.S. I'm Martha Hines and I also do astrology of many kinds in a certain way. Evolutionary astrology mixed with spiritually oriented, connected astrology, whatever word that would have, <laughs> whatever label that would be. And I'm in Santa Barbara, California, also in, in the United States. Yes, and we we just said before we started the recording that it would be a good idea to, before we go into this transit of Saturn in uh, Pisces, so maybe a few dates, um, we are actually recording this um, talk on the day when Saturn moved, just moved into um Pisces so on March 7th at um I actually have just the the um German the the Austrian time here for Austria it was at 2 p.m um 34 minutes um that Saturn moved into Pisces and I think it was in the early morning for yeah. um the United States it was uh 5 34 a.m on the in the pacific coast okay yeah great thank you so much um and saturn will stay um in pisces um until 2025 2026 so saturn will ingress for the first time into aries on may 25 25th um 2025 and then will retrograde into Pisces and then there will be some, yeah, some swimming between Pisces and Aries. Um, but yeah, I think it's, a pro we can we can have in our mind approximately, approximately spring 2025, 2026. So, and before we start to talk about Saturn and Pisces, we want to just um, share our own perspectives on Saturn as an archetype um, to ground the whole conversation. And yeah, who wants to start? You guys. <laughs> <laughs> Jamie, do you want to start? Sure, sure. Um, so, oh my gosh, so there's, you know, every archetype in astrology is so multifaceted. So there's so many ways to kind of work with Saturn, but one, my favorite kind of archetypal expression of Saturn that I love to connect with is the, the grandmother archetype, the wise, the wise one, the wise elder archetype. And I actually find Saturn to be a very loving energy and it can be like this kind of firm, this firm love. Um, but I do find Saturn to be a very nurturing energy, which a lot of people may not consider, you know, in, in, in a lot of astrology, but Saturn is really concerned with growth and giving things structure and form and building things that will last for the long term. And, and if we look at Saturn, to me, Saturn is this aspect of ourselves. So we could say our inner wise elder that that really is concerned with okay are you using this incarnation and this lifetime wisely and are you essentially um cultivating the the skills and tools so you can do what your soul came to do here and this lifetime, keeping in mind that it's not always about doing in a really active physical way. And Saturn is also concerned with, you know, are we, um, are we self mastering the karmic lessons, the evolutionary lessons that our soul wanted to come here and self master and this lifetime and, and Saturn really helps us 
um, utilize our time here on this incarnation, this impermanence of yes, time is multidimensional in the Pisces realm, but also in the kind of Capricornian Saturn realm that everything is impermanent. And we, we have this finite amount of time here and this incarnation and Saturn wants us to utilize that, that wisely so we can live a meaningful life and leave the world, um, our little corner of the world, a better place than it was when we came in here. So yeah, that's kind of how I love to relate to Saturn. I love that. I love that. And when when it's okay to con continue or do you want to um, go first Martha? Okay, because I I just I just this phrase came into my mind while you were speaking Jamie um that Saturn for me represents really the commitment that our soul makes when it incarnates on planet earth so really the soul commitment to be in a body on matter mata mother planet earth in 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 time and space in a time and space continuum and it's really and i think there lies the deep wisdom of saturn to not forget that we are a soul, but to really um, take our commitment to be a human being on planet Earth seriously. And to really, um, yeah, find ways, find effective and um, constructive ways to handle the conditions that we have in a human body on planet Earth um, in the best ways. So how do I want to um, relate to time? How do I want to relate to matter? How do I want to relate to my body? And having in my mind that I just have a limited amount of time on this Earth in this incarnation that my soul chooses now in, for this life. So how can I create a life that is um, in a way, in a good way, impactful. And um, I think there is so much about really preserving our resources, the resources of our own body and the resources of the earth that is our own body. And I think that there is so much, um, when we talk about Saturn, that comes very often this idea around harshness and um, this, this hierarchical thinking and this taskmaster that is coming around. And, and I, can, I can totally feel that. I can totally see that. And I have Saturn in the sixth house. I, there is, it, it, this can be an impression of Saturn, but, but, I think this is because Saturn also represents our conditioning. So what we have, um, yeah, what we have internalized um, from our um, education, from our families, from society. And because we live since lifetimes, literally lifetimes, And since ages, um, in um, hierarchical systems and in a dominator culture, for sure we mix up Saturn conditioning with dominator culture and patriarchy. So I think it's really important that we all always say, yes, Saturn conditioning. And with that, maybe conditioning that is um, around um, a dominator culture and around hierarchy and around repressing um, the earth and the body. But that is just our current conditioning. And when we would have been grown up in a very different society and in a very different environment, then we would not connect Saturn with this sort of conditioning. And Saturn is a yin and earth ar archetype. So we have definitely this idea around sustainability, responsibility, 
and this wise elder, this looking back so that you can move forward and being aware of time and being aware of space and being aware of our integrity and uh, to live in integrity in, in alignment with our values, in alignment with the earth, in alignment with all of that. And I think a lot of our Saturn work nowadays means that we slowly but surely become aware where we are still acting in this um, Saturn conditionings that are equally to patriarchy and mm -hmm. to find more and more back. And I think we will talk about that with Saturn in Pisces to come more and more back to this original and true and healthy and holy um, version of Saturn. Yeah, I stop here. <laughs> Yes, I agree with everything you both just said. <laughs> yes. Um, and uh, and as you both know, last week I did a, a free talk for EA Zoom meetings on Saturn. And the way I was focusing was on Saturn as Yin and Saturn as Enki. So I brought in mm -hmm. um, the archetype of Enki, which is a Sumerian god um that predates the the greek and roman saturn chronos version of saturn so i mean there's there's a whole hour and a half talk out there <laughs> for free that people definitely can listen to to hear more my perspective on that but <clears throat> something that felt that feels important maybe in this moment is when i was doing that um it felt like for me when we look at any archetype there's like various layers we can go to to unearth or reimagine or revision our relationship to any planetary body. And so the first layer to me is to recognize and notice that Greek or Roman version, which is what most of these planetary bodies are named after, right? And and then if we go down a layer, if they're if the original name is Roman or Greek if we go down a layer, there's probably a Sumerian or I don't know, Egyptian, like there's so many other, mm -hmm. not, not only just that, I mean, there's infinite cultures around the world who have had relationships to these planets. <laughs> I would love to learn about all of them, but that would take a really long time. Um, but someday. So, so, so in my talk, I, I went down one layer to the Sumerian myth of Enki, which again, predates Saturn and Cronus. Cronus, Cronus, oh my goodness. Um, and then though, I feel like then we can go back even further, which is the our relationship to the actual planet itself, right? So, so if we're trying to find the true essence of any of these planetary bodies, I feel like the further back we go, maybe the better. And again, we've got the Roman Greek mythology, then we have the whatever predates that, then we have whatever else is around the world. Then we have the relationship to the actual planet, the physical actual being. And then for me, the ultimate ultimate is go back to source, which is like Saturn entering Pisces. <laughs> um, so we can get there in a second. But um, yeah, I mean, one thing that came through in that talk was that I, I talked about Saturn, then I talked about Anki, and then I led a guided channeled meditation where we basically traveled to Saturn and were with Saturn, right? And felt for each of us individually, what what is this energy of Saturn and what comes up when we're with it? One thing that came up for me while I was doing that was this feeling that's so obvious, but it somehow was like an epiphany for me, which is all of these planets of course, existed way before patriarchy. <laughs> so we associate Saturn with patriarchy, which in a way makes absolutely no sense <laughs> because it was there at eons before patriarchy existed, before humans existed. Um, so it can't, it can't actually be equated to patriarchy. That's just, that's incorrect. You know, but, but yes, it is associated with structure and it is associated with all of the things that you just said, Verena, and therefore we do associate it with patriarchy and it's not completely wrong. It's just 
on a fundamental level it is it is off the mark um yeah so there's so much more I could say but there we go there's yeah. my gist well and I remember Martha I love that I remember asking my very first astrology teacher I was like why is Capricorn associated with the patriarchy and the Saturn I was like because it's yen you know of the earth and it was, you know, it was like actually a question I remember asking and like questioning because I'm like, if we're Capricorn is yen, you know, so I I love that that you're speaking to that. And I, I just kind of wanted to also like what was coming to me as you're both sharing, like I noticed as I started to talk and as I was sitting here, I'm like, and we're, we're literally like Saturn's in that zero point Pisces energy right now. So we are in this quantum possibility ability of Saturn moving into Pisces, but it's a brand new energy for us. And as I started to talk and was sitting here, I was like, whoa, I'm actually feeling really ungrounded. And I didn't really realize it until we started, like I started talking and that Saturn is, um, I mean, different astrologers and traditions connect the planets to different chakras, but Saturn can often be thought of as like the root chakra mm -hmm. um, and Saturn helps us ground. And so I just kind of wanted to bring in that like grounding root chakra element of, of Saturn as well. And, you know, Saturn can be sometimes called like the constriction principle, but if we, we look at it, it can be really empowering, right? Saturn gives form and structure and boundaries and Saturn can limit or constrict at times. But ultimately I think of it as Saturn will, um, I love that Nora Rochelle actually said this metaphor and I love it. Saturn's like a sieve. So anything that's not really in alignment with, um, and really in alignment with our soul, like Verena, you spoke about integrity, like that's such a perfect integrity and alignment is such a perfect word for Saturn. I feel like Saturn keeps us in integrity and in alignment with, um, you know, with, with our soul's path, like our soul's highest path that we want to live and be in this lifetime. So anything that's not really in alignment with it, Saturn will sometimes say, and I think of it as like a higher aspect of ourself, we'll say, ah, this actually is not really good for you. This is really not in alignment for your path. So I'm going to remove that from your life. And a lot of times the, the, the struggle or the challenge or the suffering that we might think of with Saturn is just like resisting. I don't want that removed from my life. Um, and so Saturn will remove what's not for us in our life sometimes. And then Saturn also will, will place things in our life that are really for us. And then with Saturn, I, I think of Saturn and Jupiter as these like nice balances, you know, Jupiter, um, which has a traditional association with Pisces, you know, Neptune, the, the, the modern one, but I think that they're both relevant here. You know, Jupiter is that, that higher wisdom, that, that seeking that quest for higher wisdom and higher truth. And it's like the, the divine inspiration and the, you know, inspired ideas come in like through that Jupiter energy. And then Saturn says, okay, well, how do we give that form and structure? Because if it just stays on that, I'm inspired that idea realm, um, that's beautiful. But, but, but Saturn says, okay, but let's make something of it. Let, let's give it form here on earth. And Saturn helps us do that, whether we need to implement the commitment, the devotion, the, the discipline. And then, you know, Jupiter, Saturn and Jupiter, Jupiter wants to expand, expand, expand us into, you know, expand the horizons of our mind and our spirit. And we expand, expand. But then if we're like a hot if we're a balloon, if we expand too much, the balloon will pop. So Saturn gives a boundary that says, okay, like, let's, let's have some type of containment. So, so, so you can hold that expansion within you. And they're both very much about soul growth. I think Saturn is very much about soul growth as well. Jupiter um, can give that soul growth through just that synchronicity, right place, right timing. And then Saturn is that soul growth that comes through sometimes um, those hard lessons. Mm -hmm. And it's the soul growth that can come through sticking with something and putting in the hard work and overcoming things as well. So um, I just thought that kind of Saturn, Jupiter kind of balance um, fits in with this Pisces archetype as Saturn's moving into Pisces here. Yeah, totally. And what came up while you were speaking, um, I feel that there is a certain 
balance on the one hand between Saturn and Jupiter. But I also feel maybe it's because I have it in my natal chart. I also feel the ba a certain balance between Saturn and Uranus. Yeah, totally. So Capricorn and Aquarius. I have a yeah. conjunction of Saturn as balsamic to my Uranus. So I, I really feel it. And I feel that there is this, um, yeah, lift off the ground, go into timeless spheres. But what do you want to do that? You are still on planet Earth and still a human. So bring it back, put it into matter. And I think that there is, um, I always have this image and I think I shared it in our Venus and Capricorn video that we did together, Jamie. I always have this image with Saturn that is so healing for me personally, that Saturn is for me about natural structures. So like a tree, a tree is very well grounded, is rooted into the earth, is very stable, is very strong, is very well structured. The tree has these rings too, in so the, the, the whole wood is structured, but it can constantly grow. So these structures are made for growth. So they are they are flexible, they are not too crystallized. So the, the, the tree is never limited by its structures. It's constantly growing. And I think that Saturn work, and I feel it so strongly with that Saturn um, turns retrograde every year, a couple of months. So it's a whole, it's always a process of finding new structures, restructuring. So this, so that because then I grow and then I need new structures. So it gets, it gets mm, painful when we stick to old structures and we have grown and then we, there is a clash. So I think that our Saturn work is really about constantly restructuring. It's not about getting rid of all of the structures. It's actually about finding structures that are now in our with our Jupiter truth and wisdom and with our Uranus higher mind and higher self in alignment. And sometimes I think that Saturn can come with feelings of contraction. But I think that here is something around, and, and I feel that with Saturn transits, this feeling of contraction, but here again, the natural cycles and natural rhythms are always about contraction and expansion, contraction and expansion. And it's actually our human mind who says contraction uh, does, not, does not feel good. So I don't want it. It's bad. It's, it's actually part of a natural process, even though it feels in the moment not that good. And I think Saturn is so much about not just being in this present moment, but really having more of this, okay, we are now having the long-term view, we are building something that can last. And yeah, I'm very, very excited um, yeah, to, to hear what you, what comes up for you, Martha, and then maybe to, to dive into the Piscean waters. Yes, I have two things, and the second one is related to the Pisces waters. So, so I'll first say, um, Yes, that that's ex everything you said. Both said yes. Um, what you were just saying, Verena, in terms of bringing in Uranus and Jupiter, I love both, and and so I natally have uh, Saturn squaring my Uranus precisely to the degree. So that Saturn Uranus dynamic is very strong in me personally, and I also just had. Hey. Yeah, I just Me had. Too. I had them conjunct within oh. a degree. <laughs> yeah, I have, we, we are all con conjunct quarters. Yeah. Oh. And so I, and I also just had Saturn squaring my natal Jupiter. So I, I, I recently felt both because I also last year had my Saturn opposition and my Uranus opposition while Saturn was squaring uh, Uranus precisely opposite my natal placement right um so i'm really currently very familiar with both personally and um 
yeah, so many directions I could go with that. But what when I was feeling that Saturn Uranus square that was happening for all of us last year, and then mirroring my own natal one, it actually was such a beautiful dance to me of the Uranus. I was having all these like epiphanies, major spiritual, you know, blow my mind, my body open kind of experiences. And then, and then the Saturn energy would come in and like, just like you said, Jamie, I would feel it come in when I was having my Saturn opposition in particular, it just, it came in and it slowed me way down, but in a very gentle way, in a way that was kind of confusing to me, but also it was very gentle. And it felt like it was like that wise grandmother energy that you're talking about, you know, just saying beautiful. Okay. And slow way down for a minute or a few months and and the timing is not quite here you just need to be silent for a bit and um and then when the timing aligns go (laughs) which is what happened for me and um and and just in general what I feel like is that Uranian energy it's like like if there are if Saturn kind of lines up dominoes in a pattern right the uranian energy will con- con- kind of consistently be re like sending an energy through that domino system saying okay yeah great so but in this moment saturn um you know gently hold that structure but be really really uh flexible and constantly in very subtly in tune with what does the 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 energy of the divine need right this moment in every single moment. Yeah. Um, In order to, we are all, okay. We are all energy of the divine. We are all the energy of divine intelligence, which I associate with Uranus. Right. And that energy needs to take form in, in exactly precisely the way that it needs to in every single moment. So it's like the Saturn energy comes along and is like holding the space for that just precisely as it's needed, you know, so that the divine energy that we are can move, but be held at the same time um, in the way. I love that, Martha. Yeah, I love that. And I love that because what came up for me is this, yes, because we are here on planet earth so in other dimensions we don't have saturn so we actually can flow in the piscean and aquarian rooms but our soul committed to be here so there's again this commitment to be here and to to find structures that are in alignment with this with this yeah higher intelligence of the cosmos or this this um waves of energy and um I think it's so interesting because um, we we are now moving from Saturn in Aquarius into Saturn in Pisces. And I think there is something around, um, I have the feeling that with Saturn in Aquarius, it is an air energy. It what Aquarius is an air energy and that I and maybe we all had um, so many realizations about where we are sticking still to rules that are not ours, where we, so this whole observation that we can have with Aquarius and this whole detachment from conditioning um, happened over the last two to three years. Um, I saw it with my clients too. So many of my clients became aware okay, here I'm still living not in alignment with my rules of life, but with my conditioning and maybe with past life conditioning too. And um, I have the feeling that maybe with Saturn now moving into Pisces, and I, I hope it's okay that I'm paving the way for Saturn into Pisces, that there can be a kind of a final release and a final surrendering and letting go and a washing away of these structures and rules of life and systems that are no longer in alignment, that we became aware of and that we can now let go on an individual and on a collective level. 
And for sure that takes time. Saturn is between two and three years in Pisces. But I really have the feeling that there is a high, and it's one of the potentials, the positive potentials or the positive ways how we can maybe work constructively together with Saturn that we can really use this time to let go, to release, to release everything that is no longer in alignment with truth and with love. And I hope that this will not only happen on an individual level, but also on, an, on a collective level. And the collective shift starts with the individual. And what I experience with Saturn, just to, to finish this thought, is that Saturn, when I have Saturn transits, and I have at the moment Saturn transits, it's never that Saturn screams to me. It's never like aggressive or hard. It's always more like, Darling, you know, you now have to put some work in it so that your life can become better. It's a very, it's a very strong, but very loving energy. And I think that with Saturn and Pisces, there is huge potential for a strong, but loving energy that is in the field. Can I jump in with one thing and then... I don't want to say anything. I just want to, I want to name something I'm noticing, which is one thing I love, which I find fascinating. Like Jamie, you were saying that Saturn right this minute, it's like, it's like five hours ago went into Pisces, right? So now it's at that zero, 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 zero degrees of Pisces. And something I find fascinating is when it goes, it's going to go retrograde at seven degrees of Pisces, but then it'll go direct at zero degrees Pisces, right? And so we're going to come back to basically where sort of ish where we are right now when it goes direct. And anyway, I don't have any conclusions about that. I just want to name that because I find that really interesting. And if there's anything you guys feel called to say, any reflections on that as we're talking, go for it. But I love that because I love, I love zero degree energy to me. It's that zero point energy. It represents the seed of potential the quantum possibility. <laughs> I love we both did that at the same time for Rana. You know, there's infinite possibilities we can tap into at that like zero degree energy. So we're kind of in this quantum potential now. Uh, and we're still, and it's really, we're just, it's pure energy. We're really feeling into it. And then we'll get a little time to swim in the energy a little more and then Saturn will go back. And it's like that restructuring to like, okay, maybe what, what, what do we need to release so we can really tap into this Pisces energy and, and grow it and build something off of it. Because when I think of Pisces, I, you know, to me, Pisces represents, it is the, well, you know, it's the cosmic ocean of oneness. It's the cosmic womb. It's where we're all interconnected. We're all one. Pisces is the higher planes of consciousness, the um, celestial realms, the etheric realms, the dream realms, the imaginative realms. And when we're in this Pisces energy, this is a collective dream. We can really connect into a higher vision, a higher dream, a higher inspiration. And Pisces is, you know, when we have this Pisces energy, it's like we're what is our individual role in the collective where we're all connected to help redream the world as we're like midwifing this, this new world in this time as we're going through these collective shifts. And I feel like um, we had the Jupiter Neptune conjunction in April of 2022. And for me, that really was my interpretation was it was really opening up those floodgates to connect in with those Pisces realms, you know, to open up our channel to really connect into a higher dream, a higher vision, a higher inspiration uh, that we'll be bringing through the next 12, 13 years as Jupiter and Neptune have a 12, 13 year cycle until they meet again. And why I think this ties into Saturn is because we've kind of been in that that visioning, that that dreaming. And I feel like Saturn coming into Pisces now, it's going to help us ground. It's going to help us give form and structure 
to what are we really inspired by? What is what is our role in this redreaming the world in this time? And while it may have been more of like on the, we may not even ha really had like um, a clear vision on it yet, which is beautiful. And that's perfectly in an alignment with the energy Saturn coming in, I think is going to help us. Okay, perhaps here's some grounded action um, we can take to really ground it and give it form and structure. And so I think there's a lot of potential here. Um, and also, you know, with Saturn and Pisces, Pisces is, it is a dream. And if those, are, if you have a lot of Pisces energy, I, I think we all do here. I have a lot of Pisces energy to me. There's a really, the dream and waking realms are not these dichotomous separate realms. They're very much merged. And, you know, like in, in the Pisces perspective, life is a dream and we're the dreamer and we can, yes, we can dream at nighttime, but we can also dream very uh, actively or consciously as well. I mean, at nighttime, you can do the lucid dreaming, but even when you're awake, we're dreaming when we're awake. And Saturn is really, I think, supporting us in a grounded way to really work with dreams more consciously and how we are redreaming our lives and redreaming the world together. I love that. It's Martha, do you want to go first? Um, I have one thought, but I can share it before or after you. Your choice. <laughs> no, just Maybe you, you probably will relate to what I'm about to say, so it's short. Um, <clears throat> yes, I love all of that. And uh, one thing that came up in the talk that I did last week when we were in that channeled part was this something I didn't totally expect, but I actually... Now I'm thinking of it and I really love this. I hope this is part of what is true <laughs> is that I wonder as we're in that Pisces, Saturn and Pisces energy also, um, Pisces is so much related to forgiveness. So what came through also was the sense of maybe possibly in this time when we're in that dreaming, you know, part of it might be an opportunity to to really let go and and to do forgiveness around all of what we have been associating with Saturn, even all of these structures, all of the, the patriarchal stuff. I don't know. Maybe it's a chance for us to, to kind of meet head on what has been really hard for us, what we don't like, what we do want to see. When Saturn does enter Aries, it's coming from Pisces. So hopefully... My my dream hope prayer would be that we can collectively use this time to let to let ourselves to dream into, you know, but also forgive, let go, so that when we move into the Aries energy, we're coming from that radical forgiveness place and we can really um be with the new. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, I totally agree, Martha. And that is so beautiful what you just said. My my thought that I had is really in alignment with that because when you said, Jamie, about the dreaming and dreaming of a new world, I think that there is so much potential on really manifesting our dreams. And I don't mean manifesting in this new age way. I really might mean manifesting from the Latin word manus, which means the hand. So really making something that you can have it in your hands. So really this connection between our dream dream world and the world. And always the question, what is the dream when I'm awake or when I'm dreaming? I mean, that's a big Neptunian question. But what I feel very strongly is that with Saturn in Pisces, it's really about Saturn is the last archetype it's uh, Pisces is the last archetype so now we are in this state in this phase individually and collectively of letting go and of already finding new dreams so that we can then put our dreams into action when Saturn moves into Aries and will conjunct Neptune and Aries mm. but I think that now it is very important to do all of this 
releasing and grieving because I think we just can forgive when we we can let go and forgive when we allow ourselves to feel and to grieve. And I feel that it is no coincidence, of course. Um, I mean, the heaven reflects an overarching stream of energy and evolution. And it is no coincidence that Pluto, that Saturn is in Pisces when Pluto is dancing between Capricorn and Aquarius and is on the threshold to entering into Aquarius, which is a huge shift. And I think we need the Saturn and Pisces energy to really let go and release the last years and to really um, yeah, get ready for entering a new world, for, enter for stepping into new timelines. And for me, Pluto and Aquarius, the closer it comes, it really feels like stepping into new timelines and embodying our future self now because it's already here. So it's really about not timeline jumping, but timeline walking for me, Pluto and Aquarius. And with Saturn and Pisces, this energy can help us to walk gracefully and peacefully into new timelines. And really this balsamic energy of Pisces with Saturn in it, and with Saturn we know about that our time on earth is limited. So there is something around grief with Saturn too. And I think finding containers and ways to grieve, finding containers and way to hold space for ourselves or to find spaces where we are held with our feelings, with our grief, with, with this release. And it's not just about releasing these conditionings and this outdated rules of our life it's really about releasing conditioning from lifetimes from our ancestry from really an old world that is no longer working and pluto and capricorn showed us that our world is no longer working and that we have to restructure and find new ways how we want to relate to earth and to life and I think that Saturn in Pisces has this huge energy of let go, grieve, surrender, feel, dream into what is really true, dream into what is actually the reality, the ultimate reality. And then with, I think with Saturn in Aries and Neptune moving into Aries, we then have the spark to go into this direction. Mm, I think that's really powerful. And that also makes me think of, you know, Pisces, when we're in the Pisces realm or working with a Pisces archetype, we can work with illusions and delusions. Now that's to me, not the true nature of Pisces. Pisces is that true cosmic consciousness, universal love. It is that it Pisces is that, 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 that truth that actually doesn't even have linear earthly words to actually even really define what it is because it's actually indefinable. It's, it's outside of the realm of this earthly realm. But when we're, when we're kind of getting to that or connecting with that, we can also work with a lot of the delusions and illusions and deception. And I think what you were talking about, um, Verena with the kind of the dissolution that can be with Pisces, right? That kind of completion and letting go before moving into a new cycle. Saturn really does um, ask us to kind of um, meet our reality in a grounded way. And what is reality? That's a very uh, kind of existential question in Pisces. It is very multidimensional, but I do feel like perhaps with Saturn moving into Pisces, that there, the, you know, some, and we all see reality through the veil of illusion in different ways because of our conditioning. We, you know, we're all, and it's this lifetime of, you know, pulling back the veil of illusion and clearing them out, clearing our window of perception more clearly. But I feel like Saturn moving into Pisces will um, have us take a look at 
some of our illusions and delusions, the way we've not really seen reality clearly, the way we've seen it through our conditioning, through our bias and the old stories that, you know, perhaps disempowering stories, because Saturn is about authority as well. And it can be um, externally giving someone authority. And then also the, the Saturn journey is um, claiming more of our own authority, right? And how to do that with an integrity as well, right? In a way where we're contributing to a better earth and and uh, in a way that supports the next generations to come. And so I, I feel like there's going to be something about, yeah, meeting perhaps uh, an initiation. Saturn to me is very much about initiation, meeting some of our illusions and delusions and deception where have we really not wanted to take a look at at reality and take responsibility because Saturn is very much about responsibility sometimes in Pisces one of the kind of shadow expressions can be to escape um, avoid right to there's so many different ways we can do that in the Pisces realm and and Saturn will I think have us take take a look at them and ultimately Saturn is also about maturation maturity Saturn gives us those experiences to mature and to have a more mature perspective as well and I feel like in Pisces there's an invitation to really um if we allow it to 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 kind of take on a higher pure, uh, a higher spiritual perspective that, that can really help mature us um, where maybe we've been kind of stuck and some self-limiting stories or narrow minded stories, Saturn will really help us see, ah, here's the higher spiritual perspective. Here's the higher spiritual unfolding that as that, that is, you know, part of your soul's journey, um, your journey of evolution. And so I think those might be some things we're working with, with, this Pisces energy as well. Oh yes, Martha, do you want to jump in? I I'm I'm not feeling called to say anything. I have one question that if we're move, when we move toward closing, um, yeah, that, I, yeah, but you go because if you have something <laughs> else called to say, yeah, because I wanted to, um, if it's okay to answer what to what Jamie just said. Okay, because I think that, Jamie, um, it's a, such an important point and you are both Pisces souls. I have a packed 12th house and I think this this thing around illusion, disillusion and disappointment, even in Pisces, is strong. And I think that how I see this illusion, disillusion, disappointment things with the Pisces energy, it's always our human self is delusioned and disappointed. And it it's always the opportunity to come to a bigger truth and to a higher wisdom. So it's always like, okay, it's not working like we thought it has to work. And then something bigger comes in. And we are like this, this child, that is sad, but that does not understand yet what is really waiting for it or what is really true. And it's often, and it's so painful for our human self. It's so painful to feel like this child that is really disappointed. And it can be very, I think that there, there at this point, there is this shadow equality of Pisces that we want to escape, that we don't want to, to see that it is not as we want the things or the people or the relationships or the situations to be. And there can be a certain um, becoming sober with Saturn and Pisces. So this sobriety that can feel very, um, that can feel a little bit not so glamorous, but that can, I think, bring us on a soul level to such a new level and to such so much more clarity um, when we are getting a little bit sober <laughs> and we feel, and I'm speaking from experience. So I um, stopped to drink alcohol when Saturn went over my Neptune. And since that time, I 
then everything started with connecting to the divine and really um yeah deepening my connection to um the divine and really having a clear channel and becoming more and more in clear channel and now i'm channeling the akashic records and it's getting even deeper and deeper but it's the the sometimes it is important that we become in a way sober and maybe literally or not literally but i feel that this this topic around sobriety is here with saturn and pisces and i think that there is um another topic that you touched on jamie a more um challenging quality is maybe that because um you are maybe disillusioned or that what i said at the beginning structures old structures fade away wash away the piscean ocean goes over it and everything yeah is washed away what is no longer true when we are not conscious and when we are not conscious um when we are not interacting with these energies in a conscious way i think there can be arise a certain fear because we have the feeling that we are losing our ground that we lose everything that we thought it is safe and i think when we are not really um grounded in our spiritual practice and surrounded by people who we trust i think that there is um a little challenge to try to hold on to old structures or the shadow quality of Pisces to put our authority into a semi god. So, mm -hmm. so to to yeah, give our authority away. And yeah, I think it it might be good to be very self um, reflective about spiritual leaders in the upcoming years and where we maybe put our authority, our spiritual authority outside of us. And to really check in if there is a balance between, um, yeah, uh, maybe maybe learning new spiritual teachings, but always checking in with your um, own spiritual authority. I think that is really, really important for the upcoming time because we just can't find safety in the connection from our own heart and from our own channel to um to god source goddess whatever it is yeah mm, i i think that's really really good about being in integrity with our spiritual connection and i think there's going to be a lot around uh spiritual teachers and really calling for integrity and in those and those areas and just something you know i thought might be it's uh, something uh, supportive to mention with Saturn is, you know, Saturn and boundaries and boundaries can come up a lot with Pisces, boundarylessness Pisces, where we're mergy with everyone and everything. And um, if you have a lot of Pisces energy, like I do, boundary work has been something that's been something I've really had a lot of work on in this lifetime. And I feel like with Saturn and Pisces, you know, we might say, oh, we'll, we'll learn how to really like self-master boundaries. But I feel like perhaps what I'm really feeling into with Saturn and Pisces is to really perhaps master the, the, the permeability and the fluidness of boundaries, because we're not meant to be like isolated islands mm -hmm. here. And this lifetime, we are all interconnected. And so there's this, I don't know, I, it's just, I don't even have much of a thought on it, but this perhaps idea of like restructuring how we think, because, you know, boundary work has been huge. It's, everyone's kind of talking about it um, because this, you know, kind of empath kind of dynamic um, boundary work is usually pretty big. But I know for me, when in my journey of doing boundary work, it's really, I had to maintain too rigid of boundaries for a very long time because I was so boundarylessness that I had to kind of go to the other end of the pendulum and have pretty rigid and strict boundaries as a very kind of Saturn thing. But then I started to notice it's like the more I wanted to like, Ooh, kind of force a boundary. Sometimes it would create so much resistance that it would almost like kind of I'd have such a hard time holding the boundary and it would be this like, oh my gosh, my boundary is going to collapse. It was almost like that 
construct of, I have to have a strong boundary would almost create that like energetic resistance. And so I feel like we're just going to be learning this new permeability and, and fluidness and that we can perhaps in this, this is just maybe more of a practical thing. I can have this set boundary and a situation in one moment that feels in integrity and true to me. And in the next moment, my boundary might be a little more different. So maybe in this moment, it feels good and true to me to be really open to someone and open to what's going on in their life and to be there and merged with them in that moment. And then maybe the next day, that's not in alignment. That's not it within integrity for me. So I need to put up a, a different type of boundary today. And that that's okay for our boundaries to be shifting and changing because with Pisces, we can certainly work with the uh, over like self-sacrificing, right? That, that martyrdom archetype, that's something definitely I've worked with in my lifetime. And so I feel like Saturn there is really, th there could be some really empowering initiations on how to really be fluid and just checking in what's true and an integrity to me right now with boundaries and that that can actually shift and change over time and to be more fluid. And I think eventually if we're living and I, I've, I'm not there yet, but if I'm like so in alignment with my truth, it won't even feel like boundaries. It will feel like just you know, the, perhaps the concept of boundaries can dissolve away, but, um, because I've had this journey of being boundarylessness that I'm, I'm still working on my boundaries, but I don't know, just some, just some thoughts there on that. <laughs> I have so many thoughts about that. I just made a video on exactly all of that <laughs> oh, um, wow. because, cool. because today not only did Saturn enter Pisces, as we know, but it Saturn enter Pisces one hour-ish after this full moon in Virgo, right? And so that's fascinating because to me that kind of paints the your colors like tints the whole Pisces uh Saturn and Pisces journey because it's happening yeah right on this full moon and and I my birthday was two days ago and I was born on a full moon in Virgo. <laughs> so these energies are so strong for me. Um Right. And, and so this full moon in Virgo is number one, conjunct Lilith, the asteroid, which you can see right there. Number two, it's actually, in a sense, creating a grand trine with Uranus and Taurus. And if you had in there Eros, Eros is, um, creates the, the third angle of that grand trine in Capricorn. So, so in this, video that again is on my YouTube channel that anybody can listen to what what I've been really feeling strongly personally is uh the the I've been playing with this new new way of being with my boundaries um so one there's two aspects to it number one <clears throat> when I think about just Saturn in Pisces I was talking to Kaylin Castell last week about Saturn and we were talking about the idea of Saturn and Pisces being related to maybe um, boundaries of the divine, like, right. Like maybe there are ways we can kind of let go, release what our, what our ego sense of boundaries should be and, and have ways to let it go to the divine and let the divine show us, okay, here are the most divinely aligned boundaries and kind of go with that. And then going along with that, the thing that I've been, really practicing just in the last few days <laughs> this morning included um is this this has really been helpful for me is to come into myself as a temple right virgo like me as the sovereign being sacred temple being that i am earth body but a a temple of the divine so so i i had two or three situations come up in just the last 24 hours where the Pisces sun in my Pisces sun is in my seventh house, right on my descendant. So I want to give away everything. Right. And I want to give and give and give and give. Okay. But that doesn't work after a while I burn out. And, um, that's a pattern that I just don't want in my life, but then I feel guilty for not giving. And so what I've been practicing doing is coming into that very consciously coming into that temple Virgo space, uh, you know, in that trine with Uranus in Taurus 
Eros in Capricorn. And and I come into the temple and then I let I give it up to the temple. Like the temple walls themselves have wisdom and I let them take responsibility, right? And so I've been having these three situations where in the last 24 hours I go into like my Pisces self wants to give, 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 do, you know, bend my boundaries all over the place. But something doesn't feel right. So I go into that temple space. And just like you were saying, Jamie, it's it's not this sense of anger. It's a sense of clarity, like just discernment. You know, all of a sudden the temple walls are just like, no, (laughs) the answer is no. Say it like this name, just name the integrity that needs to exist for you. Um, and in each of the situations I did that, and it was the most beautiful response that I got from the the person involved, you know, it was different, three different people in three different situations. Uh, yeah. So this, this is my new, my, this is my new practice on a personal level, but yes. So there we go. Love that. I love that so much, Martha. And just one, one thought that I wanted to share, I think maybe we should come to a close um, very soon. But um, first of all, I love the practice. And I think it's for you when you are watching, it's perfect. This, yeah, this um, really tuning in with your body and coming to alignment. That's a practice that we can all do every day with Saturn and Pisces. And um, what you said, Martha, that I wanted to, um, yeah, mirror back is, this idea of when I'm not giving, I feel guilty. And I think that is too conditioning that often comes from, in my experience, when I think about my past lives, that comes from conditioning, maybe in religious backgrounds, from past lives, from upbringing in a religious context. So this idea, especially I think when you are raised as a woman, that you must give, that you must care for others, that you must self-sacrifice, and then you are good and holy. And when you have boundaries, and when you say no, and when you think about your own needs, and maybe mention and claim your own needs, then you are bad, and then you go, go to hell. And that is a deep, deep imprint and conditioning. And I'm saying that in this funny voice, but it's real in my mind. It's real. And I'm subconsciously um, creating situations where all of these things around, when you suffer and when you self-sacrifice, then you feel good. And when you actually don't do that, then you feel bad. And I think that there is, again, that is a conditioning that is an imprint, maybe not from this life, maybe from the past. And I have the hope for me personally (laughs) and for the collective um, that um, this Saturn, that there can be a deconditioning process around these conditionings that we have on the Pisces Virgo axis with martyrdom and with really this I think a very healthy Pisces Virgo energy is really this deep, deep wisdom that the healing of the world starts with the healing of you. Mm. And it feels very Saturnian in a way too. It felt very much like self-responsibility. So I have to fill my own cups so that I can then be in service. Yeah. And just not this would be a whole other tangent but just to name also in this moment we have venus and a bazillion other things in aries (laughs) including (laughs) chiron jupiter vesta estrella i might be forgetting something i think that's part of the energy that we're Mm -hmm. (laughs) sacred no yes yeah there you go and the sacred yes yes Mm -hmm. and yes both yeah Mm -hmm. Well, how do you feel? Um, I think there are so many. I mean, Saturn and Pisces does know, not know any time, but um, <laughs> I think that maybe we can, I think we covered a lot of things and it feels in this moment for me personally pretty complete. I don't know how you feel. Yeah. 
Yeah, I'm feeling complete with the topic. I was thinking one way we could kind of slide to the end would be, you know, I'm imagining people wondering, okay, like for me, for example, uh, I have my Mercury at five degrees Pisces, right? So, so I'm going to have Saturn going over my, my Mercury three times this year and, or anyway, coming up soon. Um, so I'm just thinking about for people watching who are going to be having Saturn transits in some significant way, especially maybe personal planets or whatever. If maybe I'm wondering if there's some, we could just send, send people off with a wish or a prayer or some way to, to approach that. Right. Um, Cause when we see Saturn coming again in more of a traditional sense, people can go, ah, it's a malefic and it's a, blah. but we're all, I think all three of us are saying, <laughs> yeah, take deep breath. Let's come to, let's come to this with a different, <laughs> more positive, gentler perspective. Um, so I'd be curious, you know, what you each would say to that. Well, I feel when Saturn comes to a planet and our natal chart, Saturn helps us mature our relationship with that planet. So for example, Mercury, Saturn coming to Mercury can help mature one's voice, bring more wisdom to one's voice. And Saturn can often say to, you know, communicate to us to claim your authority in that area of your life. So to claim the authority of your voice and what you have to share, Saturn can be that leadership archetype as well. So Saturn coming, just I'm just giving Mercury for the example because you know that's the one that's here. But Saturn might say, "Ah, oh, it's time to, um, you know, like you might be feeling the call. I have something really important to share here and to get your voice out." So Saturn can be such a supportive, such a supportive energy to help us deepen and mature our relationship with that planet. Oh yes, I love that. And what I would what I would offer um, is that it doesn't matter if there's a planet and if you have a planet in Pisces or I mean when we have uh, planets in the other mutable signs so we will have these hard angle um, so it doesn't matter if you have a planet in Pisces or in which area I mean it's every every time in any area so in which house it is I think this is an area where you have the opportunity to really release all out all rules of life all structures all conditioning that are no longer in alignment with truth and i think this can be an area where there can happen so much healing of your around conditioning around ancestral imprints around really this I mean, you can close a chapter, I think, with Saturn in, in Pisces to, to build a new world. So the world card in tarot is connected to Saturn. And I think this, yeah, this invitation maybe of represented by Saturn in Pisces that it that you can trust, that you can now let go. And that even if it feels maybe hard or disappointing in the moment, I think that there is a deep, deep opportunity to surrender and to find new ground when the stuff that is no longer working has washed away. And maybe on a very practical level, I can imagine that it is no matter where Saturn is in your chart, I think it is for all of us and maybe very um very good to um really um not master but to cultivate a spiritual daily practice so really to ground ourselves um maybe start with a meditation practice or have a just a walk outside in nature or something like that but really find ways every day where you can just be with you and spirit, God, God, a source, where you find some sort of alignment um, and a sign, kind of a clearing your energy. I think that might be very important because I think it can come with confusion this whole time. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I would add, I would agree with all of that and then add um, if, if I had a wish for our world in this time, 
like even the example you're giving Verena the <clears throat> we could um we could say to ourselves yeah I need to start a practice and there are very different ways we could do that we could approach that right one is more of maybe what a lot of us are used to is a more harsh inner voice saying you need to I'm going to crack the whip if you mm -hmm. don't mm -hmm. that, feel guilty it's not that <laughs> not, I know you're not saying that at all but yeah. What I, what I, and we've talked about this before. Um, I really actually think if we just, if we j just switched our relationship to the Saturn energy, just that alone, I really feel like we could completely change the world immediately, instantaneously. Because, you know, for example, with that, that example, we couldn't, we could have this harsh approach to ourselves the shaking the finger at ourselves or whatever, or we couldn't can go inside and imagine, but like, become that inner grandmother or that inner grandfather, the gentle, this gentle energy. And if, and if grandmother or grandfather doesn't feel good to you, don't, then don't use that image. <laughs> but um, like if the you had a harsh, elder. what? The wise, wise elder. elder. Yeah, well, whatever image feels gentle and wise and strong and, and um, solid in some way. But if you if you then could just go inside ground, be with that inner wise elder being that is you and let, let that energy then guide you with coming to your own inner wisdom, like the wisdom of your body and your own spirit that oh yeah that would feel really supportive to me to have a daily practice i'm gonna be i'm gonna hold myself really gently and then just support myself you know in whatever way i need um yeah so there's such like a contrast and there's infinite other ways too but but yeah if we could choose that second inner voice i i, I mean i would just love to see the ripples through the whole world <laughs> Thank and you. through our own lives of what that does yeah thank you so much for adding that martha because for sure i did not mean when no. i said you have no, no, no. to create a spiritual practice no, no, no. and it's so wonderful that you just emphasized um this other approach that we can choose um yeah thank you so much <laughs> For me too. So I, I would say, um, shall we just finish with a very short um, that everyone says maybe where we can find more and uh, maybe just a quick um, finishing round. So um, I mean, I can start. So um, I think we will all, so all the video will be uploaded on every of our YouTube channel. So you will find all information and links to Martha, to Jamie, to Verena below the video. It doesn't matter on what channel you're watching the video. Um, so yeah, the best way to be in contact with me is at the moment um, we are my a newsletter list because I am restructuring and building new my website so please sign up for my newsletter there's a newsletter in German and in English language so you can choose and I'm also offering one-on-one -on -one evolutionary astrology sessions combined a little bit with the Keshik records so you can um, yeah it's more in an intuitive approach to evolutionary astrology and um, I offer these one-on-one -on -one sessions for in German language and in English language. And yeah, I have some other wonderful offerings, but when you sign up for my newsletter list um, and follow me on Instagram um, and follow my YouTube channel, I think that's the best way to connect with me. Thank you. Go ahead, Martha. Yeah, you can find me also at my website, which is livingtheonelight.com and and my YouTube channel, Living the One Light. And I have lots and lots of things that I'm offering. Um, but it's all it's all there either on my website or if you sign up for my newsletter, that's that's definitely the best way to keep up to date. And I love hearing from people. 
my email is living the one light at gmail.com. Just everything living the one light. <laughs> Beautiful. So you can find me at astrologywithjamie.com. Jamie's J A I M E, and have all my links to everything, social media on there. I offer one on one readings. I have a uh, foundations astrology course starting soon. And yeah, I have an email list too, where I share my intuitive insights. And so, yeah, thank you. Thank you all for being here with us today. Yeah. And we would love, um, if you watched the video now and you liked it, please like it, share it and subscribe to all of our channels. And I think we all love to hear your thoughts and feelings in the comments. So please feel free to share um, what was coming up for you um, in the comments. And yeah, you find all information below the video. And yeah, thank you so much for watching. And thank you too for this beautiful conversation. Thank you both. Mm. <laughs>